As an example of cutting edge compact van design, Fiat's Fiorino is pretty much unbeatable. A few rivals share its design, but none have its impressive diesel engine. If the carrying capacity suits, it's hard to ignore. Things have come a long way since compact vans were super minis with blanked out windows or small car chassis with metallic cubes bolted on the back. For proof, here's Fiat's take on the concept, the Fiorino. With two and a half cubic litres of uh, cargo capacity, it's got nearly as much luggage space as you'll find in larger uh, Citroen Berlingo or Fiat Doblo size vans from the next class up. Yet the same nimble manoeuvrability as you'll find on small car derived vans like those based on Ford's Fiesta or Fiat's own Grande Punto with their, their feeble one cubic litre luggage base. Though this cutting edge design is shared with Peugeot's Bipper and Citroen's Nemo vans, it's very much Fiat's own based on the underpinnings of their Grande Punto Super Mini. It's also unique in offering the Italian Mark's slightly more powerful 1.3 litre diesel multi-jet engine, despite more affordable pricing. Plenty of reasons then for the International Van of the Year Award showered on this model at launch. You'd never know it, would you? What lies under the bonnet is key to why operators might choose this Fiorino rather than its Peugeot or Citroen design counterparts. The Fiorino alone has Fiat's 1.3 litre multi-jet diesel engine with 75 brake horsepower. This acclaimed unit differing from the 1.4 litre 70 brake horsepower HDI engine that you'll find in the Peugeot, uh, Bipper and the Citroen Nemo versions of this design. Now, the Fiat unit is extremely compact and lightweight, giving rise to excellent fuel economy. And it's also got uh, a decent amount of grunt. You get uh, pulling power from just 1,750 revs. And that makes the van feel very spirited around town and you can dart into gaps in traffic very easily. This van's pulling power really comes into its own around the town, meaning that you're less likely to feel the need to row the thing along with its chunky five-speed gear lever. If you want to avoid the need for that completely, there's the option of a, a comfortmatic semi-automatic transmission. The 73 brake horsepower 1.4 litre eight valve petrol option, well that's also Fiat's own unit. Although it's hard to see why you choose it, unless your annual business mileage is so small, you can't make up the 800 pound diesel premium with savings at the pumps. The Fiorino has a gross uh, vehicle weight of 1,700 kilograms, which means that it can be subject to car-based uh, speed limits rather than the more onerous ones imposed on vehicles exceeding the two-ton weight limit. Plus, it can tow a, a trailer with a braked uh, gross weight of 600 kilograms. For urban use, operators will be pleased to find that all Fiorinos have the accurate power steering and tight turning circle that's really needed when space is tight. It's just 2.8 turns lock to lock, and that means a total curb to curb turning circle of 10 meters, which rises to 10.5 meters wall to wall. On the open road, body roll is well controlled as are noise levels, but the ride could get a bit choppy on uneven surfaces. There are ventilated disc brakes on the front and drums on the rear, and anti-lock brakes and electronic brake force distribution are standard, though uh, the ESP stability control system you get on some vans sadly isn't. The Fiorino has been designed with the urban environment very much in mind and has been decently screwed together at its Turkish factory. The whole design of the car is based around this wheel at each corner stance, which maximises interior space and manoeuvrability while keeping the van compact and wieldy. These wraparound bumpers uh, protect from parking knocks, while the really expensive items like the headlamps, the radiator and the bonnet are set well back to lessen the chance of them coming to harm. The interior of the Fiorino may feel a little confined to those more used to full-sized compact vans, but there's reasonable space for driver and passenger. Now you sit quite upright with a good view uh, of the Fiorino's surroundings, and there's a good degree of adjustability in the driving seat and in the steering wheel, so that most should be able to get comfortable. Um, Oddment stowage isn't quite as great as you'd find in a, in a larger van, but uh, with 12 storage compartments dotted around here, there should be enough space to store most things. 
There's even a, a fold down dashboard desk as an option. Without the dreaded VAT, list prices suggest that you'll pay somewhere between eight and a half and ten thousand pounds for your Fiorino in van based cargo form. There's uh, a premium of around eight hundred pounds if you want the 1.3 litre 75 brake horsepower multi jet diesel rather than the uh, 73 brake horsepower 1.4 litre 8 valve petrol version. There's a premium of around £700 if you're looking for a combi 4 or 5 seat passenger carrying version. Having chosen between petrol and diesel, cargo van or combi people carrier, potential Fiorino buyers must evaluate their purchase uh, not only against this vehicle's design stable mates, the Peugeot Bipper and Citroen's Nemo, against which, by the way, it offers a, a £200 model for model saving, but also against older rivals like, say, Ford's Transit Connect or Vauxhall's Corsa-based combo van. Those considering the Fiorino Combi uh, must consider other people carriers like uh, Citroen's Nemo Multispace or Ford's Tornio Connect, or perhaps more car-like van-based uh, mini MPVs like Renault's Kangoo or Skoda's Roomster. If you like the idea of a Fiorino Combi but want something that's just a bit less van-like, then Fiat will also, for a £500 premium, offer you their Qobo model, essentially the same thing with more stylish trim. OK, notebooks at the ready, on to the figures. Will this van be able to cope with the kind of day-to-day -day use that your business is going to need? You might have your doubts, because at first glance it looks rather small. It's 3,864mm long, 1,589mm wide. That's a, that's a road-going footprint that's smaller than most super minis. Still, you've got a, a very large uh, two and a half cubic litre capacity at the back there. Uh, that's only 0.7 cubic litres less than Fiat's much larger Doblo van. And there's a payload of 610 kilograms. Now that volume can be increased by means of an optional folding front passenger seat which flops down to increase cargo capacity by 0.3 cubic litres to 2.8 cubic litres. Now that might not sound like a very great increase but it pushes up the load length from 1,523 millimetres to 2,491 millimetres and that's going to be a huge boon if you're trying to get longer items inside. The loading bay is accessed by these asymmetrically split rear doors. The slimmer one being on the uh, driver's side and they open up to 90 degrees or release the catches and you can push them out to 170 degrees. Now plusher models get uh, this sliding rear door and you can also opt for a second sliding door which I've gone for here. Uh, from the options list. Now the apertures behind these side doors are, are quite slim, quite narrow, so although you've got uh, 1,041 millimetres of height, you've got just 644 millimetres of width, and that means that big items are going to have to come through the back. Now at the back it's much better, you've got a slightly more height, 1,060 millimetres, but a lot more width, 1,140 millimetres. And that's enough for large items like this Euro standard pallet. Now it helps in lugging this thing in that it's, uh, the bumper here is just 527 millimetres off the ground, that's pretty low. And it also makes all the difference of course that you've got 1,064 millimetres between these wheel arches. Now where you really get the benefit of a proper purpose designed small van like this over a car derived super mini like van with blanked off windows is in loading height. You've got 1205 millimetres, I couldn't do this in a super mini van, and a total of 1473 millimetres of total width in here. There's also uh, some really useful tie down hooks, there are six dotted around the load floor here. Uh, and if you forget to use them and your load slithers forward in transit, you've got uh, an angled frame that protects the driver's compartment. The doors are lined to half their height, but operators also might want to consider ply lining to protect the rest of the interior at the back here from scrapes and scratches. Now, running costs, these should be pretty competitive. You get 
61.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle from this diesel version, which puts out just 123 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now that compares pretty well to the petrol model, which manages 40.4 uh, miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 165 grams per kilometre of CO2. Service intervals are generous, spread 20,000 miles apart, so it won't always be in the workshop. And you, Fiat will give you a three year, 100,000 mile warranty with the first two years on unlimited mileage and with uh, a year's roadside assistance at the start. You also get an eight year anti-perforation rust warranty and three years of paintwork warranty. Now, unless you really do need something big and transit-sized, you might well find that your business could function quite happily with a van like this Fiorino rather than the slightly larger uh, mid-sized compact uh, LCV like a Citroen Berlingo or Fiat Doublo that you might otherwise have chosen. Commercial drivers are able to live with this Fiat's versatile 2.5 cubic litre load space will in return get lower running costs and lots of extra manoeuvrability. Now it's a trade-off that many operators will be happy to make. The uh, Fiorino well suited to the trials and tribulations of getting around modern towns and cities. The design is the best of its kind and in the multi-jet diesel there's the best engine you could choose. What's not to like? <laughs>